Hi, I'm Tanya, and I'm here with the owner of Jordan Winery and Vineyard, John Jordan himself. Thanks for joining me. Good to be here, Tanya. I'm so glad. So we're back, Pete and I. It's one of our favorite wines, and we're so happy to be here visiting again. And I wanted to, sit, to uh, really put so much, um, up, so many upgrades into the chateau rooms and everything that's going on here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, first bit of news, and this is worth pointing out, is Sonoma, in specifically, and California are open. Sonoma County wineries are open, restaurants are open, there are no mask mandates, there are no capacity restrictions. It is just like in the free states of Texas and Florida. Finally, <laughs> and more to the point, you know, our industry, our community depends so much on people coming to visit. I mean, people think of us as the wine country, which is true, but there's so many small businesses that depend upon um, our visitorship each year. And so I'm pleased to report that we are back open for business and excited to be seeing guests once again. Which is very great news. Pete and I have noticed that everywhere, especially in Harrellsburg and around all the wineries around and the properties are open and alive and well, ready for guests to come back out. I know last year when we were here during COVID, all experiences were outside, but I did notice that things are back to normal. Absolutely, Tanya, things are back to normal. And please, once again, this is, this is a plea, please come and visit our area. You know, we depend again, the livelihoods of so many depend upon um, people coming from around the country to enjoy Sonoma County, which you can now, and you don't have to be just outside to do it. During the pandemic, um, Jordan Winery, like other wineries and restaurants, we had to adapt. We had to come up with new ways to see the few visitors that did come to the area, as well as cater to locals. And so we were forced outside. So that made us stop and think, geez, you know, we're looking at all these improvements to our visitor areas that we were going to do over the next three or four years. Mm -hmm. We thought, this is not going to end within a year, so let's take advantage and see how much and many of these projects we can tackle um, during this period, so we don't have to shut things, parts of the winery down when uh, when people want to be here. So to that end, you know, we revisit pretty much all of our visitor spaces, um, our entrance visitor courtyard, our three overnight suites, which are open to members of the trade and our estate rewards program, as well as our dining room and uh, let's see, and as well as our library and cellar room, which are an uh, integral pieces of our tours and tastings. Mm -hmm. We noticed that. We did do the um, library wine tasting and that room is beautiful, so beautifully redone and so authentic, um, lovely. We also did the estate tour today, which takes you up to the Vista, which is so interesting and a great tour. Last year, our experiences were outside with the addition of Paris on the Terrace, which was a lovely dining experience, and the Chateau Block tasting, which I'm, I'm so happy to let everyone know that those experiences did not go away. No, there's one of the few things, you know, there were a few things from the pandemic that are going to stick with us. Masks are not one of them. <laughs> um, par our Paris on the Terrace prefix lunch, uh, limited to a very small number of visitors mm -hmm. per like 12 to 14 per, per day, as well as our Chateau Block tasting. They turned out to be such a big hit that even now that everything's back to normal, people are opening, there's a there's huge demand for them um, because they were unique. So that in that sense, the virus really, or the pandemic really forced us to kind of uh, be a little more creative. Mm -hmm. And you know, you mentioned you mentioned the, uh, the, the renovations in the library and the authenticity. Um, Jordan, unlike many wineries in California, is not a big corporate owned thing. It's just me and my three dogs. <laughs> that, that are in charge. So there's not some big corporate board of directors and a lot of bureaucracy. Um, my parents started the winery and their vision was, they, my parents fell in love with food before they loved, fell in love with wine of all things. So food has always been an integral part. I mean, if anything, that's a core element of what Jordan is. And our culinary program um, is among the most robust in the industry, even when you count a lot of the big guys. Um, because we actually feel like wine is not something to be enjoyed by itself. Wine is to be enjoyed in context with great food, hopefully with good company, and in beautiful surroundings. And so we, so our culinary and visitor programs are intended to remind people that, hey, that bottle of wine you got, that's not something just to be enjoyed all by itself, although you can, although that's kind of sad and weird. We like to see it enjoyed with food. And whether it's the home, the, the really great, at a really great restaurant or the home chef, that's all a wine really is supposed to do, is make that chef look good. And so our wines are designed and always have been, because it was my parents' original vision, and it's one of the founding precepts of the great wine regions of France. Whether it's uh, 
whether it's Burgundy or whether it's Bordeaux, wine isn't supposed to be a big standalone thing. The French love their food as much as they love their wine. And that's what really Jordan is all about. We like to say we do three things, Cabernet, Chardonnay, and hospitality. And we, we're pretty proud of all three, and we have no plans to try to do 50 other things and try to be all things to all people. And that really speaks to, you know, what I think are our core values as a company, and uh, to use an aphorism, just keeping it real. I think you do those things very well, and many of my followers may not know that you do an exceptional olive oil production. We got to see the olive trees today. They do one Cabernet release a year and one Chardonnay release a year, and then you have a partnership on a lovely champagne. On a lovely champagne that you can sadly only purchase here at the winery. But you mentioned the estate tour, and the estate tour is our flagship experience. It takes about half a day. It's a movable feast across the, the 1,400 acres, which is the Jordan estate. And so we have different stops, and there's different food and wine pairings. I don't want to give it all away, but it ends up at the Vista Point, but it goes through our chef's gardens, um, by our lake, so where I go bass fishing, I like that, <laughs> often. And it, it, it's so, but what, the, re, the reason behind that, it was started in 2013, is that when people go to the wine country, people think of wineries. They think naturally of a tasting bar, or that belly up to the, you know, that belly up to the bar, I'm gonna get my couple ounces of wine and right. go wine tasting. Mm -hmm. What people don't really, the average visitor of Sonoma County visits 4.5 wineries, that's a little known fact, but, it's what it's a fact we kind of looked as kind of sad because Sonoma County has so much more to offer um, whether it's the beautiful Sonoma coast Napa doesn't have coastline uh, or all of the things that grow here and pretty much everything does grow here except for papayas and mangoes and coconuts well I'm surprised that doesn't grow here because everything really does everything. Grow. that garden is incredible and that's what's that's why Sonoma County in so many ways is becoming a food destination little town of Healdsburg has a three-star Michelin starred okay. restaurant 9,000 uh, 9, 9, people live in Healdsburg got a three-star restaurant and every other restaurant in Healdsburg is fantastic mm -hmm. and I think that's that and the diversity of scenery and diversity of experience is really kind of what separates the Healdsburg area generally and specifically in the Sonoma, Sonoma County generally uh, as being distinct from Napa. Mm -hmm. I will say every tasting that Pete and I do at Jordan Winery is a culinary experience. In fact, you may not know they have an executive chef here on property that prepares everything with his team. And, and, and interestingly enough, John, I really today just put this together. Every time we do a tasting, we are not tasting the same uh, wines. Like there may be a 2010 cab in one, but there may be a 2009 cab in another. Today we tasted a 2015 Chardonnay, but we also tasted a 2018 Chardonnay. And I finally stopped and asked and said, Who, who's deciding what we're gonna uncork and open? And it's actually a big team meeting paired with the cheeses and the bread and the, the salad that comes straight from the garden. Everything they do here is truly organic, down to the flowers that you can eat, and then down to the flowers that are arranged on the table are grown here on property. So it's, it's truly, um, we're not just going to uncork this wine today and taste it. It's, it's a lot of thought goes into it, and I think that's a huge difference. Well, that's it's our passion for hospitality. Right. Um, you know, and that's why we have a, a fairly diverse, um, a, a wide array of offerings for visitors. Mm -hmm. And for our estate rewards members, you have everything from formal dinners to formal lunches to being able to stay in one of our guest suites or one of our guest homes on the property. We really wanted to bring the graciousness of old world living and bring it um, to California because so many of these traditions are kind of getting lost in today's fast-paced world. And no matter how great the hotel is or how fancy it is in whatever city, some of the little touches mm -hmm. and the smaller details um, that, are, that we think are so, the more civilized aspects of old world hospitality, we're trying to preserve those uh, traditions here at Jordan. I, I would totally agree. I will tell you if you come for any of the Jordan wine tasting experiences, which are open to the public, reservations need to be made, you are not going to hurry your way through wine. It's going to be an experience. It's going to be an education. It's going to be a, an in-depth explanation of why you're tasting what you're tasting. Everyone here is an expert in wine, in Jordan wine, in the region, in the area, and, and answers every question that you have, which I think is sufficient. And I really appreciate it, quite frankly. Pete and I, for one, are never in a hurry to plow through our wine tasting. We're always here to learn and maybe to discover something new. And we always want the questions of why. 
like was that a good year did the fire affect the vineyard did you know we love knowing all that and I, I really appreciate that you take the time to answer all that it's really fascinating we do it's it's you know we invest a great deal in our staff and you training and getting the right people and that's and as we all know right in any business it's all about personnel right exactly. and it's personnel and culture if you're good at personnel in business you don't have to be good at anything <laughs> that's that's true. Tell me a little bit about how big is the vineyard and uh, how, how much do you grow here on site? Tell us the, about the varietals. Well, we're, we're both a buyer and seller of grapes. As you know, our Chardonnay is all purchased grapes from the Russian River Valley, mm -hmm. which gives it that bright acidity. When you try the Chardonnay, the first thing that you'll, that you'll experience is surprise because it isn't a big uh, butter, Sonoma County butterball. It's bright, flinty. Um, and, 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 it's and, and bright, it's it's, yeah, it's brighter mm -hmm. and more acidic, and goes with a broader range of proteins if you want to do food pairing. Okay. But it's something you more expect from a Merceau. It's the last thing you'd expect from California. Mm -hmm. Now our Cabernet is a Cabernet blend, of seventy-five percent Cabernet, twenty-five percent Merlot, Petit Verdot, and Malbec. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a it's a in the Bordeaux tradition. Unlike a lot of Napa cabs, it's lower in alcohol, so you can actually still walk after that third glass. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's a lower it's a lower alcohol, and it is designed to be. It's more restrained. Mm -hmm. The flavors are a lot more delicate. Um, we grow. We're both a buyer and seller of grapes here, and we are in the middle of a replant. But this gives us has given us a chance to experiment and to uh, advance our winemaking skills and advance the state of the art in the industry. But the Cabernet is another surprise. It's not something you're going to expect from California. You can't stick a fork in it. The fork will either stand up or dissolve like a lot of other Napa cats. Designed to complement a meal, not overpower it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's something reminiscent of a Bordeaux more so than California. Anything else you want to share with my followers? We hope you all come out and visit us. Um, Tanya's great. Again, on behalf of my fellow residents here and everybody else who runs a small business here that's dependent on visitors, please come if you're inclined to visit the wine country. The fires have not burned anything down. The, there's no more restrictions. Everything is fully open, and it's a beautiful time to come between now and Halloween. Oh, yeah, that's the time to come here. Really, is between Easter and Halloween. Really? Yeah, November it starts to get rainy. We don't want to discourage okay. people. We're just right. being honest on your blog. Sure, that, sure, sure. Yeah, November, December, it, January is probably we still have some visitors, but the peak times are really spring, summer, and fall. So is that time like your rain season? Is that yeah, it's our rainy your, season. Your, kind of your bloom? It's rainy season and the leaves aren't out as much. Got it. Um, uh, we're still open, mm -hmm. but it, you can't go outside as much. You can't right. experience the same sights, sounds, and smells that you can the rest of the year. When, here's an interesting question, and, and I know that my followers want to know this. When is crush? Well, harvest varies um, from year to year, but generally there's some rules of thumb. The Chardonnay comes first, and that is generally <clears throat> either in the last three or four days of August, beginning, oh. or it's the week, it's somewhere between the last three or four days of August to the three or four days after Labor Day. So just think like the last week of preseason to like week one of the NFL season. Perfect. If you, if you keep calendar like that, Chardonnay. which I do. So that's Chardonnay. Now Cabernet is, comes a little later. Mm -hmm. um, the Reds come a little later and they generally start third week, fourth week of September. Okay. So you're, so it's, it's week three, you know, you start to see which teams are good, uh -huh. which teams are bad. The Detroit Lions are not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs yet, <laughs> but but it, it, you are getting into you are getting into football season, and that's also when the leaves start to turn here, and that's okay, when it's, I bet it's yeah. Gorgeous. Everybody thinks of New England with fall foliage, and that really is, and you can't really compete with that. Right. But as number two, Sonoma County is is, is more spectacular foliage wise than you would think. I bet it's gorgeous. Now, as far as Crush is concerned, is Maggie your winemaker? Go out and make that decision, or is Maggie that... is the winemaker, right. and she has a staff, but Maggie is the final authority as to when when grapes when it's are go brought time. Over. I bet it's amazing to watch. It really is. Like, it's really fun because the Chardonnay comes at night because our style of Chardonnay with those bright acids require that the grapes come in at cooler temperatures. So they literally the, the get Chardonnay picked are at night. all night. They, 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 all they, night. Yeah, Chardonnay is a nighttime operation. Wow. Because the gra those grapes, to keep that bright acidity and that mm -hmm. flintiness, they have to come in at cooler temperatures. Okay. Which is, uh, you know, you contrast that with Cal other California Chardonnays sure. where they're bigger, rounder, more flaccid, mm -hmm. then it, the, the, the temperature when they come to the winery isn't as important. And so I, I guess a Cabernet is a, you, you're picking during the day. Yes, Cabernet is picked during the day. Okay, and so give me kind of a, we're getting into crush now, but is that like a, a, we get it all in one day? 
Oh, no, no, no. This no. goes on for about a month. Oh, wow. The cat, the reds go on for, sometimes you stop, too. You might get a little spot of rain. Some vineyards are ready, some are not. So you, it never. Nothing ripens all at the same nothing time. Nothing ripens all at the same time. Okay. And so you, and even if it could, the winery, the fermentation can only hold so much. Mm -hmm. So harvest really starts like around the 1st of September and is kind of done third, fourth week of October. And sometimes there's a week stop in there, four or five days, several three or four day stops. So it's truly harvest season. It's a season. Yeah, okay. Got it's it. really almost about two months. Well, that's amazing. We've learned so much today. Thank you for your time. And cheers to Jordan Winery.